Hey, reader and writer friends. If you don't know me yet, my name is Brittany Wang, and I am the author of the Young Adult Fantasy Serial Series on Wings of Ash and Dust, which is currently releasing. It is my debut series of six shorter, fast-paced, action-packed books that I've been rapid really blah, ooh, let me see if I can say this rapidly releasing over the last two months. That's a mouthful. Publishing a new book or what we call an episode in the serial world every two weeks. New book every two weeks. And I've been organically marketing uh, this series by doing things like hosting release day writer chats like this one that we're doing today. Uh, also hosting book read-along chats about each episode on the off weeks and experimenting with a bunch of other fun marketing methods, which I shared a whole list with you guys in this video, which I've linked down below. And since today is the release of the fifth episode in this series, Cavern of Terrors, oh my gosh, we only have one more, you guys, and the series is done. That's crazy. Um, I thought it'd be really cool <clears throat> to chat about all uh, the three things that you guys have been asking about to hear about lately. And that is what I've learned while self-publishing and rapidly releasing a series for the first time. So kind of the pros and cons and things I've learned. Um, would I do it again? Or would I do anything differently next time? And what marketing strategies I tried and which were most effective and which ones did I find not as effective. Um, my patrons, ARC team members, and a bunch of you over on Instagram were super excited about these topics. So I'm pumped to chat about it today. I see a bunch of you live here with me, which is great. And at the end, I'm also going to reveal the sixth and final cover in the series. So stick around for that if you're excited for that. In the past, I've also shared uh, videos about why I chose to self-publish, basics of what a serial is, which I'm going to try to not have to totally explain since I've said it a lot. So if you're totally confused, please let me know in the chat and I will explain it. But definitely check out these other videos if you want to know the fullness of what a serial is, um, how I plotted my serial series, and a ton of marketing ideas I brainstormed, and more. So if you want more in-depth about any of these things, I've linked a bunch of videos down below, or you can go searching on my uh, YouTube channel to find them. I have playlists and all kinds of things on there. Um, but today, we're going to focus on what my actual experience has been thus far, and I'd also love to really cater this chat to whatever you guys want to know most. So while I have a bunch of preset questions that I've gotten from people earlier, please let us know in the chat if you have further questions. I have two lovely moderators, Allie and Mary, who have agreed to make sure that I don't miss any of your important questions. So thank you so much, ladies, and let's get chatting. I always like to kick things off by uh, having you share in the comments and chatting a little bit back and forth. And if you are watching the replay after we're done the live, um, I will have timestamps so you can skip over this beginning chat if you would like to, or you can totally watch it and engage with us in the comments down below. Um, but I'd love for you guys to let me know two things in the comments if you're live. What are you most excited to talk about tonight? Or if you have pressing questions already and what fairy clan from my book are you? And if you don't know what fairy clan you belong to yet, you can always take the quick fairy clan quiz, which is linked down below in the description. But let's chat and I'm going to bring my face up a little closer so we feel like we're all together here. And oh my gosh, there's so many comments already. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're excited to talk about this. Um, I also asked people to start sharing um, if they are self-published or trad published or not yet published before uh, the chat. So I always love getting you guys chatting, anybody who shows up early. So I love that Allie was sharing. And I think a few other of you were sharing too. Uh, Sako's looking to rapidly release maybe, so that's exciting. JJ's coming out with her debut self-published book in uh, October 12th, so I love it. Let me grab some of the comments, the most recent ones. A bunch of you are saying happy release day, so thank you so much for being excited for me. Um, Devin, I'm so glad you can make it too, yes. Um, let's see, I also cannot wait to get my Dryad zip up hoodie, yes. You guys, I will talk about this a little bit later but we're doing a donation challenge right now too. That'll last through Thursday. Um, if you'd like to buy the books or the merch up until Thursday, 20% of uh, purchases are going to go to St. Jude's um, Research Hospital for Children. So um, just uh, 
putting that out there. Thanks, Ingrid, uh, for being excited about that. Yeah, Athena, one more left. I can't believe it. One more episode left. Um, Mary says, I'm excited for my nymph hoodie. It should be here this Thursday. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, Mary. Um, let's see. Thank you, JJ. Happy release day. <clears throat> Thank you, Holly. Let's see. Thank you, Angel. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Uh, oh my God, I just finished book five and I have so many questions. We will talk about it next week. We will have a book chat about uh, episode five. I love it. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, ooh, so many comments. Okay, I'm going to try to look and see. Oh my gosh. Okay, so excited to learn from this rapid release. Okay, great. Um, Sako question. I want to know what hangups or things that didn't work out with rapid releasing. Definitely will address that in a little bit. I love that question, Sako. Um, Ali says, self here as someone who started the self-publishing process, I'm always curious to see other people's journeys and process. Me too. Like I, I love doing like how-to videos where I give tips and stuff, but I also love like doing and seeing other people share their personal experience. So today's sort of going to be like a mashup of like me sharing my personal experience and then giving like a few tips here and there based on my personal experience. Um, Ingrid says, Team Dryad, and I'm all about hearing about the self-pub experience. Yay. Abby, I think I'm a self, though I also like some of the others. Definitely, you can, you can always take the quiz to find out which one you are officially. Um, Holly, Team Dryad, excited to hear about your experience with the fast release. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Hi, Hudson. I'm so glad you can make it, too. Leanne Vagrant, I've accepted that I don't fit properly into any clan. <laughs> that is fine. You are a vagrant. Wear it round, loud and proud. We need vagrant merch. I just realized I don't. Well, we have the one with all of the fairies on it. So that's probably vagrant merch. Um, that's such a cool way to give back. Thank you, Devin. Um, you know, watching this while eating dinner with my daughter, Ember, she's seven and didn't understand that you're live. Hi. Let's see. Ember. Hi, Ember. <laughs> and let's see. Yes, go vagrants. Okay. So I think I caught up in the comments. Um, but we're gonna get started, I believe. Yes. Okay. We're going to get right started into the content. First talking about self-publishing and rapid releasing in general. And then we're going to talk about marketing um, afterwards. So stick around if you're excited to talk about marketing. And the first question I got, and again, you guys can ask further questions and Allie and Mary are going to grab them for me if I miss them. Um, first question I got was, has it been successful? Has this rapid releasing been successful? What did you expect? Do you recommend it? And I will just say that this is, I definitely think this is not for everyone rapid releasing. Um, it's a lot of work and a lot to learn when you're first starting out. And, you know, I don't know if this is better. I think I'm going to do this because I do have a bunch of bullet points. I don't want you guys to miss. I'm going to pull this up. Um, so I would definitely listen to what I have to say today to kind of balance out. Do you think that this would be something you really want to try? Um, but I think also that as I share, hopefully I'm passing along some wisdom, some things I hope to do differently next time that um, will hopefully make your first experience a little easier. Um, and ultimately, though, I think your success with with rapid releasing, but pretty much with anything in life, right? Depends on what your goals are. And so real quick, I'm gonna share what my goals were. And you guys, if you wanna share in the comments what your goals are for publishing it all, no matter what route you're going, um, to see can you measure your success based on your goals. So first, was one of my goals money. And I will say that some people make a ton of money from rapid releasing serials, and some don't. Um, for me, this wasn't a get rich, quick or get famous quick kind of scheme. Um, that wasn't the most important thing for me. Money wise, I wanted to start making my money back on what I spent publishing, which I have made a good dent in so far. And the series isn't even done releasing yet. So that's encouraging. I'm also um, getting new book orders and reads almost every single day. So my books are in Kindle Unlimited as well. So I can see the pages that have been read, as well as people that are buying the books outright. Um, and <clears throat> this kind of stat, according to some of the author friends that I have that are already publishing are saying that getting orders and getting reads almost every single day is really good, especially for a debut author. And you also have to keep in mind that the serial is still, uh, releasing. So we'll see what happens when the whole series is out and if I can keep marketing it up and, and keep those numbers up. But I am going to stop talking about numbers specifically because that could be a whole nother video. And if you want to know more of the nitty gritty numbers, I will see what I'm feeling, feel comfortable sharing. And I could do a whole video on that. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. But my other goals that were 
truly more important to me is first um, having an anchor series. And this is something that Sarah Cannon talks about a lot. And she says, when you have a series that is sort of the anchor of your author career that your readers are super excited about, that you're continually coming out with, or that you've finished, that you can keep pointing new readers back to, that is strong and that can really get people locked into loving your books and wanting to read anything else you come up with. Um, that is what an anchor series is. And it creates this kind of backlist that you you can send new readers to um, forever. And what serials can do is that it can get that anchor series out faster, right? Um, the other goal was to start building a loyal readership. And especially because this is like my debut book series, whatever. Um, I need a readership period, but I also wanted to develop a really loyal readership. And um, so part of that you know, is like that a serial could help me do that because I'm putting out new content a lot for a short period of time. Um, also gaining momentum and engagement. I really, I'm an author who doesn't just want to put books out and then, <clears throat> you know, people read them and really like them and then like move on. Like I, I would love to keep engaging with my uh, readers. As you guys know, that's why I love doing live streams. And, um, so I really, really wanted to do something that I could be engaging with my readers, like as they were reading the books. So serials have helped me do that. And then um, building a fandom, uh, which we'll talk about more in a little bit, because I really love being a fan of things and fandom geeking over things. And I've always dreamed of having um, people do that for my books as well. So I already I see a lot of comments coming in, but I just want to get the, through the benefits and pros. And then I will check on comments in a second. But some of the benefits and pros to self-publishing slash rapid releasing based on my goals. Um, so based on the success that I wanted is... My anchor series is done um, or it's about to be done. October 12th is when the last episode comes out. So I went from not published at all to a complete six book series published in less than three months. Um, and I didn't have to wait years for Trad Pup to get their act together and get my books out. Um, and as I said before, you can also point readers back to a backlist. So now whenever I engage someone who loves fantasy books, I can be like, hey, I already have five books out in this series and the sixth one comes out in October. And after October, I can say, I already have a six book series out. <laughs> you should go check them. And each one of them can be read within like a day or two. So you can totally binge them and get the full story. Um, then let's see, I definitely started building a loyal readership, which has gained series momentum and people reading from book to book. So I can see people kind of buying through the books. Um, I'll tell you how I'm seeing that, uh, KDP. And so I'm seeing sell through, which is great. And then I'm seeing lots of engagement. Obviously, you guys are here, which is awesome. And um, <clears throat> Uh, my readers as they've been reading this. Um, so I've definitely been seeing like a fandom growing. And um, some of the highlights that I'll just share with you guys, if you missed it, is that we had a fan art contest, which was so fun. So by the time episode three was out and people were reading it, um, I had a contest and a bunch of you submitted poems and art and food that you cooked from the books or drinks um, and all different kinds of stuff. So this was really, really fun. You can see the results on Instagram and in a, one of the videos, one of the read along videos. So obviously there's a fandom building, which is so fun. And then um, also readers are buying and posting about my merch, which is really, really cool. So these are some of the wonderful people that have bought um, merch and is showing off on Instagram. And if you guys tag me when you get your merch, it makes me so excited. Um, so yeah, so that has been really great. And then also um, fast releasing and self-publishing in general has helped me do the following things. It's helped me uh, get into a groove of self-publishing. So I feel like I've developed a process that really um, works for me and I'm going to constantly be making it better, but I've gotten into a groove. Um, and then it has also helped me see what things worked and what didn't work for me. So again, optimizing that groove. And um, I could experiment too from book to book with marketing ideas to compare and see, okay, when I did this, this like really helped with this. But when I did this, it like didn't get as much of a response with this book and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I've been taking notes and obviously we'll talk about marketing in just a little bit. And um, I think one smart thing I did, even though there is a con to it, is I only did eBooks first for this serial. 
And these are the reasons I'm glad I did. Um, because I realized recently that if I had also done physical books, one, readers probably wouldn't have gotten them in time to join in the read-along events, would have felt behind um, because mail, you know, it can be delayed, especially in the time we're in right now. So not only that, but formatting those books, getting proof copies for those books, checking to make sure that they're okay, and then mail delays on top of that, I just, I would have gone crazy. And so especially with a two-week turnaround, if maybe I had a month or something like that, it would be different, but two-week turnaround was a lot. Um, and I don't think I could have done physical books at the same time. And I can also, though, scale up from here from ebooks. So I do plan to do a paperback of all the episodes and also an audiobook um, after that. And I have thought about doing paperbacks of the individual episodes, but I'd really have to see how cost effective that would be because I would have to either purchase full wraps of all of those covers or I would have to design them myself. Um, so that would be a whole nother project. The big con, though, is um, I know a good contingent of people who are waiting for the whole series to be out before they read the rest of the episodes. I think um, it was Abby who said in the beginning that she had read episode one, she really liked it, but she's going to wait until the paperback to then read the rest, which is totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, but that's just some people's preference. I have many friends who are like, I'm so excited to read your book or like family members. I'm so excited to read your book, but I, I don't do well with ebooks. I'm just going to wait till the paperback comes out. And that's why I like that I can build on and add a paperback after. And the benefit actually of this too is I'm taking little notes on little things that I could maybe optimize in the story based on reviews or feedback to then um, kind of beef up the physical book at the end. So that even might have some, some little additions or little optimizations at the end. So um, there's that. And I think though too, between the ebooks and the paperback release, I'm able to hype up the story and the people that are reading right now um, as I'm organically marketing on social media, newsletters, all this stuff. Once the paperback comes out, all those people that have seen all the hype and all the excitement of the ebooks, you know, um, are going to be even more excited to buy the paperback. Of course, that's theoretical at this point, but we'll see in a few weeks. Um, well, a few months probably when I get uh, the paperback altogether how that will shake out. So I'm going to pause here because I'm seeing the comments going like crazy. I know I'm missing a bunch. Um, Allie and Mary, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been um, reposting any specific uh, questions, but I'm going to try to go back a little bit and also watch um, the current comments here. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. So I'm gonna find where I was. Um, okay, <laughs> people are taking notes, I love it. Rapid releasing looks exhausting. It's it's a little exhausting, um, but I think, I, well, I'll, I'll get to that if, I, if I'm gonna do it again, but fun. Okay, good, Leanne. Um, Abby says, when do you think the bind up of all the episodes is going to come out? That is a great question that I'm actually gonna be masterminding with my CP <laughs> and my other friend, Mandy tomorrow um to figure out when it would make sense for me i'm gonna need like a good long like break and like kind of rest time after all these series come come out and then i'm gonna have to format the paper book the paperback and um i'm working on the final cover and full wrap with my cover designer but i'm also working on with a map maker to make a map to go in the book so i'm thinking early 2022 but I don't really know yet, but I will let you know. Um, Bethany, thank you so much. Uh, Amanda says, solid goals and super proud of you. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I may do this with Violent Blue, People's Princess will be one book. Yes. And that's the thing too, to figure out. And I've talked about in past videos that you can um, see previously how to tell uh, if your story should be a serial or regular novel, because I don't think that every story could fit both. So I, when we get to, I have a couple of resources about plotting serials and that's, those are the videos that I think you should check out. Thanks, Bethany. Um, Leanne, are you planning a sequel series of Ash and Dust? I'm going to let you know after all the books are out. I'm going to let you know. Just, just stick with me. Um, this, uh, these are awesome goals. Thank you, Devin. Um, Athena, I think you did amazing with building flowers with followers. <laughs> flowers, building followers with videos, Patreon and everything else before your book came out. Thank you. Athena. And that's something we'll talk about when we get to marketing. 
Allie, love that you had specific goals in mind. Thank you, Katie. Or in like six hours, give or take. <laughs> yeah. Um, Donnie, what do you think about KDP so far? That is a great question. Allie or Mary, could you write that question down and um, let's talk about it at the, I have like a section at the end that we can talk about bonus questions. That is a great question. I don't want to forget it. So make sure I don't. That would be great. Or Donnie, you can, you can bring it back up. Um, Ingrid says, one of my goals is creating that anchor series. It won't be a fully continuous series, but a series of standalones that still have dynamic characters and setting that changes. Um, and I would suggest Ingrid looking into Elise Kova's, oh, I don't have the book because I was starting to read it, but Elise Kova's um, Married to Magic series, because it's a three book series so far of exactly that. They're standalones and they have similar vibes, but they're totally separate, but they're similar enough that people are enjoying going from book to book. So I would definitely check that out. Ingrid, I love all your goals. Definitely makes me want to reflect further on what my goals are. Yes, because then you know if you've been successful. Um, Athena, physical books after this, I have a need. <laughs> I know I would really like to have all the physical like episodes on my shelf too, but we'll see. Katie, I'm kind of the opposite now. I have a hard time reading physical books now because I read so many ebooks and audiobooks. Audiobooks have really, yeah, <laughs> they've got me. They've got me to a place that I'm like, can just all books be audiobooks? Um, thank you, Allie. So Abby asked, when do you think the bind up of, oh, I got that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Allie, you're doing such a great job. Okay. I saw these. That's fabulous. Um, Sako says ebooks only panned out paperbacks later indeed. Yes, I think for me, at least for this series, it was a good uh, call for me. Um, okay, Sako, I want to know what hangups or things that didn't work out rapid releasing. And that's what we're going to get to right now. And But people are excited about the maps and your book covers are phenomenal. Thank you, Hillary Barden on Instagram, Re Barden, R-E-E Barden. She's amazing. I'm so glad you guys like them. Um, yes, let's see. Okay. 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 And Abby, how has Kindle Unlimited worked for you so far and how has it boosted purchases engagement? Um, this is another question, Allie or Mary, if you guys want to copy this and we'll put it at the end, that would be fabulous. Cause I'd love to talk a little bit about that, but let's get into, I have to get back to my slides here. Um, let's get into challenges. AKA problems, AKA cons, <laughs> whatever you want to call them of this process. So, um, I had a qu specific question. What has been your biggest obstacle with publishing? What problems did you encounter and solutions that you came up with during the process? So I have three big ones that I want to highlight, uh, three big challenges. The first was having to educate my audience on what a serial is over and over and over again. Um, some are still again, only interested in paperback copies too want to binge it when it's over. So even though I'm educating and like being like, look, it's like so fun and exciting and you can engage like on all these like activity things like read alongs and things like there's a lot of people who are jumping on that and being really excited about it. But then there's a really good contingent that are like, that sounds great, but like, I just want the paperback. So <laughs> that's one of the challenges I've had to, um, but I will say too, then I'm still coming out with the paperback. So it's not it's a challenge right now, but it's not an ultimate challenge. And we'll see what happens with the paperback, if that makes sense. Number two, um, having enough time and keeping up with deadlines, I said, was definitely a challenge. So releasing a new book every two weeks has been a lot, especially because I have absolutely no prior experience besides these serials. Um, I am also, I will let you guys know, I am doing this full time. Like this is all the writer stuff that I do, Patreon, YouTube, my author website, Bootcamp, now books, you know, and merch and all that kind of stuff. I have a conglomeration of all these things that make me money. And um, this is what I do full time. And if I had a different full-time job or even a part-time job elsewhere, I think I might have gone a little nutty. Um, that being said, I also planned a lot of extra marketing things that I think I could scale back on next time to make it a lot easier for myself. So here's where you get like what I might do differently next time. Um, I also still had proofreaders sending me edits and I had to implement their edits and format each book and craft a book description and research retailer categories while I was also marketing and putting out these books and doing these activities with you guys and everything else I usually do. So that, uh, I thought proofreading would be like, okay, here's a few errors here and there. My proofreaders were like so thorough <laughs> that, um, they were like mini minute plot holes and just like clarifiers and different things that I was so thankful for, but also like meant that like three days, two and a half, three days out of the week, I was editing 
while I'm also marketing, while I'm also doing the things. So we'll get to what I would do differently from that. But that was happening. And then um, if I had done, oh, here we go. If I had done all of that beforehand and I was ready before I published and all of that was ready before I published so I could only focus on marketing, I think I would have had a much easier time. Um, I would have enjoyed the marketing a little bit more, I think. Um, and if I don't get it all done next time, like proofreading and blurbs and all that stuff, I think I need to plan to do less marketing and less engagement activities. <laughs> um, also, I need to make sure that I step back from a few things that I normally do because on top of all that, again, I was still keeping up with Patreon and, you know, I was trying to post on Instagram, like not just saying buy my book all the time and all these different things. So um, I realized that I added publishing without taking anything else away. So that's another tip that I would just tell you guys to like make sure as you're making your plan and you're adding publishing, just know that you're not just adding like publishing to your to-do list. You're adding like 50 million other to-dos and you're doing it in like so fast a time and you're going to do it over and over and over again if you're doing a rapid release. So you got to take some other things away from your plate in order to do this well and not go crazy. Um, and the final challenge that I came up with was trying to do it all, which I kind of hinted at before, but in my marketing videos idea that I mentioned before, I talked about how my friends encouraged me not to try to do it all, but I kind of did. <laughs> and I think that's what really brought on the stress. I was like, oh, shiny idea. Oh, I really want to do this. Oh, like I want to do that too. Um, because I got a question, how did you manage your stress while rapidly releasing and keep up with social media and your arc team and everything else you do? And honestly, I sometimes I don't know how I did it. Um, sometimes I didn't manage it very well. I'm just gonna be transparent. At times I pushed myself really, really hard. Um, I actually realized I had this realization the other day that I had started turning like caring for myself as into a reward for getting stuff done instead of caring for myself so that I could get stuff done. Um, that's a dangerous place to get to. Don't get there. Um, and so again, I would, I would do some things differently next time so that I did not get to this place of not being healthy basically for periods of this time. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to go into a question Janine had about keeping up with deadlines. Um, and so I have a lot of tips on that, but I just wanted to check and see how we were doing on comments. So I see Ali said, will you sell the eBooks as a serial at the same time as you put the paper back up? Or are you thinking of bundling the episodes into one eBook? So the thing, is, the thing that I've seen, I'll just answer this real quick because it's an easy one. The thing that I've seen um, authors do is that they'll keep the separate eBooks they can also make a collection, a digital collection of all the books or certain amount of the books. Um, and then you can also, I'm pretty sure on top of that, do the paperback, I think with the ebook collection, or maybe you have to choose one. I have to look because I wasn't necessarily thinking about doing a digital collection of all of them. Um, but I know that the Charlie Travesty series has all the books separate, ebook separate, and then they're grouping four at a time into one book. So um, I will keep selling the eBooks as a serial and probably keep them in KU as long as possible. Um, and then also do the paperback, which I can do on KDP, but just not anywhere else. Leanne says that feeling of wanting to do it all at once. Don't forget to breathe. Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> Anybody else getting stressed out listening to this? Just, just breathe with me. <laughs> um, JJ, self-publishing one book has been crazy for me. I can't imagine how stressful and crazy it's been for you. Thank you, JJ. It's nice, yeah, when other people understand. But also know, too, that you are doing an ebook and a physical book. And like I said, I definitely could not do both of those for a whole rapid release all the time. It just would be too crazy. Um, Mary says, definitely don't forget to take care of yourself. Thank you. I need to be reminded of that. Hi, Heather. Glad you could make it. Um, Ingrid, my problem is wanting to do it all in theory, but then actually not doing much of it. <laughs> so I think I will need to push myself harder when the time comes. And you can flux, especially if you choose to do um, a serial or rapid release. Like with one book, you could do like definitely with book one. I'll just say that. Push the hardest for book one because that's the entry point to the rest of the series. What I have noticed is that as I'm promoting the other books in the series, 
there's other people that haven't even started book one. So I'm like, hey, like episode five is out. But I always have to say, but you can always start with book one. And this is why you should start with book one. And so it's I think it's really, really important. And I've been told this over and over again that like you want to push book one as much as possible, do most of your energy and most of your marketing into that. And then you can kind of ease up as you go through the rest of the series, because there will be those loyal readers that will just keep reading because they have to know what happens. And they can also help you promote um, as well. Tanya says, you are a superstar. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you guys for the encouragement. Um, okay. So let's continue. Uh, Janine had a bunch of questions about deadlines. Um, and she said, I'm debating doing uh, a serial for my series. And you said 13 to 26 episodes. So I'm really wondering, yeah, what your timeline looks like for that. But you said, I would like to, hold on a second, help on how long it might take if you're bad at deadlines to hire editors, et cetera, how to time cover reveals and make sure you finish on time so you don't get pre-order privileges taken away for a year. Because that's the thing. If you don't have your final copy of your book uploaded um, early enough, uh, especially on Amazon uh, for your pre-order, all your pre-order, your pre-order gets canceled and all the pre-orders that came in go away. And you also lose pre-order privileges for a year, at least at the timing of this video. So um, yeah, that's pretty intense. So what I would say is, um, oops, Okay, hold on. So for editors, we'll get to my timeline in a second. But for editors, with this being my debut, I wanted to give myself as much time as possible and didn't make promises or set up pre-orders until my manuscript was with my copy editor slash proofreaders. And they kind of had them at slightly different times. And I'll explain in a minute. But I don't suggest looking at my timeline and being like, I should do the same timeline as Brittany. I would suggest taking my timeline with a grain of salt and just like kind of being like, okay, this might be a gauge of what to do. Um, or at least to start off with, because I always know like people are like, everybody's timeline is different, but like, I always like at least having some frame of reference. So I'm going to give you my timeline real fast. So last September, which is about a year ago, um, I booked, uh, my developmental editor and my cover artist, um, October through February, I worked with both of them on, so cover artists with all the covers and my developmental editor with, um, with all the episodes. And we went kind of like episode by episode, even though she read them all at once. Um, I think she gave me feedback on like the first half and then the second half, I think that was, so I could start working on the first half. And we kind of went back and forth about a few things as I was finishing this up. Um, from February to May, I chose to work with another round of beta readers, even though I did beta readers before working with my developmental editor, because I wanted to make sure that the edits I did with my developmental editor, because we were so close to the project at that point, that to new fresh eyes, the story would make sense. And I made even more changes based on their feedback. So I'm really glad that I did that. Um, and then in June, um, I handed my copy editor uh, okay. So let me back up. So in, <laughs> I have extra notes here. I gave my copy editor episode one in March while I was still working on the others. And then the rest of the episodes in June. Um, and that's so that in June I could start working with proofreaders on episode one. So hopefully it makes, se makes sense. And then, um, my copy editor could give me the rest of the episodes and I could keep working with proofreaders going forward as things started to publish. Then I set um, episode one for pre-order on June 15th and um, August 3rd is when episode one published. And then every episode after that has come out every two weeks after that. So that's kind of my outline. I believe I have an Instagram post that kind of wraps up even all the way back to like mm -hmm. my timeline when I first started working on this story. So that's there if you want to check it out. But in short, for making pre-order deadlines, my suggestion is don't set pre-order dates until you're done with developmental copy edits and either in the proofreading phase or done with the proofreading phase, especially if this is your first time, maybe even wait until the proofreading phase is done. And even if this isn't your first time publishing, every book is different. Um, and I've seen seasoned authors set pre-order dates when they're still in the developmental stages and then miss their pre-order deadline. So even though they've done this a million times, they can kind of gauge and be like, okay, I think I'm going to be done at this. Like life happens, like every book is different. So to be safe, especially for your first time, um, that's what I would suggest. Did I put that up there? There we go. Um, and then I would though 
have a date in mind, but I wouldn't announce it or, um, or commit to it to anybody else except maybe some accountability friends. Um, but in general, I would give yourself more time you, than you think. And this is the one I just put on the screen. Janine asked also um, about timing of cover reveals, which I was told to always partner with your pre-order announcement. And I'll explain the benefit of doing that because that's what I did and it was very beneficial. But I would also say that generally longer pre-order times equals more pre-order sales, which is something I've heard. But then I also saw it with episode one. I got like tons of pre-orders and that, that had like a month and a half of pre-order time. While um, my other episodes only had about two weeks and sometimes less if I delayed uh, sharing the cover reveal and then the pre-order link. So sometimes it was like a week and I got a lot less pre-orders for those episodes because there was just less time for people to hear about it and make a decision if they wanted to pre-order and for me to promote it. And I could share a complete breakdown of the timing of everything I did, like in the two week span for this episode, Monday I did this and Tuesday I did that and Wednesday I did that. But we would be here for a while if I was going to explain that. We still have to get to marketing. So um, I might, was thinking maybe doing a pre-recorded video where I kind of go through at least what I did. So let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. So I'm going to stop here um, because I'm going to talk about uh, what I rapid release again. And if so, would I do anything different? Um, and I definitely just want to check uh, comments. I see Bethany's comment, even though I know all this from our chats, obviously, I'm still so enjoying hearing it all in order. My planner heart is happy and inspired. Yay. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Bethany. Um, I think that's the only comment I have seen. So Allie and Mary, thank you so much again. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, but I'm going to keep going um, with the slides anymore. Sorry. Okay. So first question was, would you wrap in the release again? Short answer, yes. But next time I might do uh, some things slightly differently. Um, and... Some of that is I might release uh, for, um, I might have, let me start over. I might have longer episodes. Um, so maybe like, I don't know. Okay, I've been thinking like 35, 40, 45,000 words, maybe like closer to like a very short novel, like under a normal novel. So it's like 50,000 words is usually the max, but like maybe just un under that. So that I could release um, three to four weeks apart. Um, and then this way I would have, um, more time to promote pre-orders and have rest time in between. Um, but I would maybe also do a max of four episodes. So that would be like one episode a month. And I would only be doing that for four months instead of, you know, if I did six episodes, one a month, that would be like six months of my life. So, um, I was thinking four episodes. Yeah. And then I would have more time to promote pre-order, to rest in between, and to post about other things to my audience. Uh, so they, again, I didn't always feel like I was saying like, buy my book. This is why you should buy my book. Um, and for me, I've also built up a really strong, obviously, writer audience. And um, so that's part of why I've kind of done things like these live streams where I'm like teaching what I've been or sharing what I've been doing as I'm going. Um, but it's been harder to kind of cater to those of you that are just more interested in the writer stuff because I have something coming out every two weeks and I have to promote that as well. And, um, but I've been trying to like merge it and trying to serve both audiences. And that hasn't always been as easy as I thought. Like if I only had one book coming out, that might've been a little easier, but doing a rapid release, it makes it harder. Um, I have also thought, I don't know what you guys think about this idea, but also doing maybe a separate Instagram or even a TikTok for my books, um, and what other fantasy books I love sort of doing more of a bookstagram kind of vibe elsewhere to really connect mostly with readers and kind of not separate my audiences, but kind of reach more readers, um, people who are purely interested in the books and in fantasy books and talking about that, um, in a different space. But again, that's also adding something completely different to my plate. <laughs> so these are all things uh, I have thought about and uh, we'll see what I choose to do. Uh, advice, what advice I would give for people who are thinking about doing serial is coming next, but I saw some more questions coming in. Jackie says, um, as someone who is rapid releasing six books, two months apart, I recommend pre-writing as much as you can and not sending dates before you're finished the first round of developmental edits. Yeah. Um, 
she's con con continuing. I made the mistake of not doing this with my current series and it's stressful. Yes. And I, I knew that about myself. I was like, I need to have a pretty close to done product before I start publishing um, or else I, I knew that I was going to go crazy. So you guys are hearing it from somebody else who um, has an even longer time between books than me. Uh, I would definitely suggest writing it, getting developmental edits done. You guys already heard me say it, but I'm agreeing with you. Um, Dee would like to see that separate video of the breakdown. So I'll have that on my list. Um, okay. Separate video. Yes. Ingrid, I'm always completing things before announcing I'm too anxious and worried to try another anything sooner because unfortunately I know myself. Right. And that's good to know yourself. And I think the balance for some people who are more on the side of like, I know I shouldn't set a deadline or like, you know, announce a deadline because I probably won't make it and blah, 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 is also having the balance of having like a mastermind group or having accountability partners or a critique partner or somebody that you're saying, this is what I want to do. And this is my plan to get there. And I'm going to try to stick to this as much as possible. I'm going to have grace with myself if I don't get there. Um, but now I have some accountability so that you actually get to the finish line. Cause there's some people who like jump the gun and there's the other extreme of people never get there because they're afraid to commit and not to say that that's you, but that's the spectrum. And so wherever you fall, there's ways to grow. Um, a lot of valuable information. Thank you. Ingrid says, was really cool to see how your timeline looked. Love So much love and care put into this series. Time flew by so fast too since you announced you were self-publishing. Wow. Yes. Yes, it did. Because I think it was like last October that I announced that I was self-publishing. So yeah, happened fast. Um, how is your brother's board game going? Leanne, let's, we could talk about this at the end. Um, great question. I'd love to say a little bit more about that. So make sure you repost it or Allie and Mary will repost it at the end. Um, never not rest important step always. Yes. <laughs> and I'm doing a comic book series. Oh, that's super exciting. Cool. Okay. So let's get into um, and a question from, uh, Clary actually, or Jackie, who's here, um, biggest advice for writing a serial and advice for first rapid release. So besides everything I've already shared, um, and something that we also said about, um, uh, making sure you get as much done as possible before you release it is, uh, to get feedback and test out your serial before you publish it. Um, before you commit to publishing a series, um, one, a book one after the other for weeks on end, make sure you can prove that your story and serial structure works and beta readers, um, that beta readers are excited about it. And this is what I really loved from working with beta readers is, um, kind of testing out, especially my last round, I gave it to them in episodes to make sure that the episodes worked, that they were really excited about the story. And, um, I think that the more I tested it out on people, the more I shared little bits here and there, the more I could tell that people were really excited about this and it was worth my time investing in this story. Um, so I would definitely do that. And then I would also do your research about serials. I know there isn't like a ton, ton out there, but I feel like more and more people are talking about it um, in different forms of it. There's also Kindle Vela that have, has come about. Um, but I will say, if you want to learn more about how to plot or structure your serial specifically, I have two videos um, that I think would be really helpful for you. The first one uh, goes through like a little bit more of like structure, um, nitty gritty, and then two ways to plot your story. Um, I talk about uh, serial structure, but I do it in the context of how I organized it in Scrivener or in a Word document. Um, so these two together, I think will give you a lot of help. Um, and you can also read my episodes, obviously, and then watch the book chats that we've had because I share the outline for each episode in those videos. And those outlines might not make complete sense unless you've read the episodes. Cause I do very like sparse, like, you know, cattle or, um, inciting incident was this and bad guys close in was this and makes a lot more sense. My code words make a lot more sense if you've actually read the episodes, but then you can go back to those reader chats, look at the outlines and kind of learn from that as an example. So hopefully you guys find that helpful. Um, and I had a few other questions that came in that I've already talked about at length in other videos. So I'm just going to like do a speed round of like five questions and, and send you guys to the videos that will be most helpful for that. So one of you asked dealing about dealing with the cost of indie publishing, and I found a lot of ways to help raise money and, um, 
earn money to then support the self-publishing. And I did that through Patreon, through creating a course, through YouTube, all kinds of stuff. And I talk about a bunch of side hustles for writers um, in this video that's kind of on the older side now, but I still think it's relevant. So if I haven't already, I will link that down below soon. Um, what made you decide to self-publish or switch from traditional publishing? I had a whole video on this as well. So that's that video. And you can find it on my YouTube to channel. Can't talk or it's linked down below. Um, tips for formatting. I do not yet have a lot of resources on this, but I know my dear friend Bethany Atizada has this um, amazing series she did about formatting your books using a Word document and um, really thorough, really awesome. So I definitely suggest that. And then um, I'm using, though, a little bit of her tips and then draft to digital. And I've also thought about um, the program Vellum, which you can research. And then um, how did you find your cover artist was another question. And I have a whole video about how I found my cover artist, what it was like to work with her, and all kinds of questions that were asked about cover artists. Um, and finally, should I have an LLC when publishing? Um, and basically, I think the short answer is if you want to separate your personal assets from your business assets, um, that's usually the way you do it. And this just helps if you get sued for something in your writer life, then it doesn't spill over into your personal assets. Um, a great resource that I learned a lot of this like business type stuff, as well as marketing and general self-publishing stuff is Publish and Thrive um, course by Sarah Cannon. And I have a whole course review video that you can check out and learn more about that and everything that's in the course. <sighs> okay. We're finally at marketing <laughs> and this section is shorter. So I think we'll get through it a lot faster. Um, but I just want to make sure that I'm not missing any comments. Um, okay, cool. I think I'm good. So if you guys are good, I'm just going to go right into marketing stuff. Um, the first question is, did I do ads? And you guys have heard me talk about how I've done organic marketing, um, all the way through this. So the short answer is no, I have not done any ads yet. Only organic marketing. I have been told though, just to pass along what I've been told is to not invest in ads until you have at least three books in your series, because then you um, are really investing in the sell through of your series. And it's not just like they're going to, you know, see an ad or see a promo deal and like go for that one book and then not buy anything else. You really want to capitalize it so that um, they'll buy the one book, they'll read it, they'll love it, and they'll go to the next and the next and the next. That's how you make money in this self-publishing world. Um, and, but let's see, I did build up a following beforehand. You guys know I've had this channel. Gosh, I don't even know how long. Has it been three years? Over three years? Something like that. Um, and so I have this YouTube channel. I've had Instagram. I've had my newsletter, my website. Um, <clears throat> I did uh, do a lot for writers and talking about storytelling. And so you could <clears throat> more go in the bookstagram kind of uh, vein. And instead of marketing and like kind of developing relationships with more writers, my mindset was always like writers are readers. So if I, you know, talk with writers and I resource writers, like hopefully they will want to check out my books. Uh, the thing that I should have paid even more attention to, so I'd love for you to learn from this, is not that I wanted to alienate anybody from, um, you know, the writer stuff that I was uh, sharing, but what I could have done is focus even more on fantasy writers because fantasy writers will hopefully be reading <laughs> fantasy books. And I know that a lot of you, or well, not a lot of you, but like I have a good deal of people that follow me, sign up to my newsletter, watch my YouTube channel that don't read fantasy or don't write fantasy. And so um, you always want to like sort of gear towards your ideal audience, but the one thing that did help me is by casting a wider net and kind of helping writers, fiction writers more in general, is that it did help me income wise because through Patreon and my author website course and all that stuff, if I only focused on fantasy writers, then I would have a much smaller pool to kind of uh, glean from. So there's a lot of pluses and minuses and negatives, but um, the point is, is that I built up a following be long before my books are ready. Um, this was something that was suggested to me by already published friends. And um, it definitely, I mean, most of my audience and most of my readership, I think right now are the people that have been following me. If, if you guys, either you're watching the replay or you're here in the live, if you have just even read episode one, um, let us know that in the chat. And if you haven't started reading it yet, 
Um, you can put not yet in the comments if you have already. Um, but uh, I would love to know how many of you that are watching this right now that are active on my YouTube channel have actually purchased the book. So we can do a little, little test, little stat test right now. Um, and let's see. I will say that I do plan to learn about and experiment with ads after all the episodes are out though, but I think it's been really great to have this time that I can say I was organically marketing, you know, on my own without spending money on ads in this period and how well did that do? And then once I start ads, um, does that exponentially help? Does it not help as much as I thought? And I could let you guys know that as well. Um, Okay, then uh, I'd love to share with you guys what worked, uh, what I think worked uh, for marketing and what I think didn't work as much. So I'm going to get to that in a second, but I'm seeing some comments coming through. Um, Mary says, uh, I've read through to episode five. Uh, Robert says, not yet, just found you. Welcome, Robert. So excited you're here. Um, Ashley says, what kind of market research did you do before publishing? Can we uh, pin this question for the end as well? Because that's a good question. I'm probably going to need like a minute to uh, kind of think about, but I'd love to answer that. Dania has been reading the series. JJ says, what if you're not doing a long series? I have a duology, so I should wait to do ads when I release book two. That's what I've heard because I think then it, that just capitalizes on the money that you're spending. So, you know, get uh, book one out there, market it as much as you can. And then once book two is coming out, that's when you can put like a deal on episode one and promote that and get a bunch of readers super excited about it. And then people are not only buying, um, they say episode book one, um, but then if they love it, they're going to, they are already primed and ready to buy book two. Whereas if you got a bunch of people, you paid for ads for people to buy book one, and then you come out with book two, like a year or so later, unless they're signing up for your newsletter and staying like engaged with you and like on the edge of their seat, ready to buy book two, it might be more effective to wait until book two is out. This is just what I've heard um, from many, many people. So I'm just passing that along. Um, Robert says, interested in fairies. Yay. Yeah, I would definitely check out this series if it sounds like something that is up your alley. Uh, Ingrid said, read it all except the final version of book six. Yep, because Ingrid was a beta reader before. Love it. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the things that were most helpful or effective because Crystal asked what marketing ideas paid off for you the most. If you could do one thing for marketing, what would it be? Or conversely, what would be your top three marketing tips you'd give with the experience you have now? Um, and I will just say that again, this is my experience. And so I think like different things work for different people. So you really have to just experiment for yourself, but it's definitely very helpful to hear from other people what has been helpful for them. So you can kind of gauge. It also might depend too on like genre and what genre and age category you are marketing to um, and which kind of marketing tactics reach those age categories and people who like those specific genres. So it's also something to keep uh, in mind as a caveat. But first, um, so what I will say is that KDP has a new beta. So KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing, which is under Amazon, right? And that's who I'm publishing through. And they have a new beta book reports page that is light years better than what um, they had before because it wasn't really telling you a whole lot, but now it does. And I love it. And I can visually see how many books have been sold or pages read on Kindle Unlimited every day per book, which is really cool. They got like color coded graphs and like all this kind of stuff. So this is what I've been doing. When I do a certain kind of marketing, I've been trying to take a look at the reports and see if any sales slash um, Kindle Unlimited reads happened as like right after I, I did that marketing tactic. Um, it's not an exact science, so it's still hard to tell what worked best, but here's my best guess based on the data I have. So the first thing was, um, okay, I did have that on the screen. The first thing was longer pre-orders, which I've said before. Again, episode one got exponentially more pre-orders than the others. It was also the first book in the series, but I also had um, over a month, like a month and a half to hype it up, whereas the others only had a week or two once I revealed the cover. But I did like the pre-orders in comparison, all the others like blew it out of the water. Um, then 
Uh, the second thing I would say is picking the right retailer categories. Um, and I don't have solid proof that getting into the top 100 of a certain Amazon category or other retailer cat, um, category or making it to a number one new release really made a difference. But I think it definitely makes a difference for readers who are searching for new books on retailer sites. So readers that might have not found you otherwise, because they're just more vivacious readers that are just like trying to find all the books that they can on these retailer sites. So they could search a top 100 list and look in their favorite categories and find your book. That could also mean you're listed as an also buy on someone else's book like yours. So if you go on Amazon and you see like the book, but then you scroll down, you see like all these other books popping up. It's because Amazon is recognizing it based on categories that it's similar to and um, how well the book is doing that it'll show up in the also buy section. So you could get suggested based on, you know, ranking or getting into these other categories. Um, you can also share these things like, hey, I had a number one new release or I'm in the top you know, 100 of this certain category. One is just fun, but the other thing is it kind of, depending on the category, also shares a little bit of credibility of how book, good your book is doing. Um, and I will share that there is a um, tool, uh, I think I have it on here, called Book Category Hunter by Nerdy Book Girl. And I don't have time to like share exactly how to use it, but basically if you take the ASIN code of any book on Amazon and you put it into that page on Nerdy Book Girls page. If you Google that, it should come up. You can see all the categories that they are currently in on Amazon. And so what I've done is find found books that are similar to mine that I think audiences of those books will like my books and looked at those categories and be like, which of these categories fit my books? And can I, you know, because you can request um, Amazon to then add you to those categories. So that is something that I've done. And I think that has really helped because um, some of most of my episodes have stayed in the top 100 of some category, uh, at least in one category. And so I think the work that I did, and I learned a lot of this from Sarah Cannon's Publish and Thrive course, um, that's been really cool to see. One thing I think I forgot to write on the slides, but I have it in my notes is um, cover reveals, which is huge. So I wish I could just edit that and put it on the screen, just pretend it's there. Is cover reveals really uh, worked a lot too, I think. The days I had the highest spikes of purchases and reads were constantly cover reveal days that where I first announced the pre order and I showed the cover for the first time. Um, so on Instagram or newsletter or whatever. And so I think, you know, from that, we can kind of tell that great covers really do sell books. Uh, that being said, make sure your covers are great. Cover reveals won't do anything for you if you aren't drawing in your ideal audience. Um, so if they're, but if they're great, everyone will want to share them and check out the books. So that's just um, another thing that I will say is make sure you're doing cover reveals and that you do it on the day that you're ready to announce the pre-order so that people can see the cover, they get excited, they see the book description, and they go pre-order it right away. Not everybody will pre-order, but a lot of people do. It's kind of surprising. So that. And then the final thing I will say is um, my ARC team <laughs> has been like my secret weapon for sure. They are amazing. I know a bunch of you are here that are on my ARC team. I love you. Um, <clears throat> and basically I explain it like this. If only the author of a book is saying my book is great, buy it. That's not nearly as compelling as if 20 or more readers are constantly sharing about the book and saying how great it is. Would you guys agree with this? Um, plus they have their own, their own friends and their own audience to extend reach to um, further than the one author could do by themselves. That's where an ARC team can come in, um, not just ARC readers who usually only agree to write a review in exchange for um, getting an early copy of the book, but an ARC um, or a street team who are all in to not only read, but also help you promote the books. I think that's been making a big difference for me. Um, not only are my ARC team constantly helping me promote this series, but they have become loyal readers. And so that's a benefit in and of itself as well. Um, and I, if you want to learn more, I shared about my ARC team in this video when I was first announcing it. And like, you kind of see how I set it up and what I chose to do with it. And I also did a deep dive with my author life uh, tier on Patreon who get an exclusive live stream every month. We did a deep, deep dive on like the breakdown, even more of, um, how I put my arc team together and what kind of things I may do differently next time and, um, answered questions and all kinds of stuff on there. 
so that is that. Um, let's talk about the things that didn't work, but I am going to check the comments real fast before I do that. Um, Natalie, hey all, arrived late because YouTube didn't tell me until a minute ago. That's okay. Um, again, replay will be available, but so glad you're here. Um, Leanne, how, we were saying how much you guys have read of the series so far. So Leanne says, um, so excited about book six. I need it now, please, because she's read book five. Um, and we have some me too's, um, love it. Natalie says, I'll just lurk in the back of the room and listen as I work on new author website, author website. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, Mary says, you can also catch the replay. Thanks, Mary. Um, thank you. I'm so glad you guys like the covers. They, yeah, I'm definitely excited about them. Um, street team. Yes. So yeah, a lot of people call it a street team too, but street team doesn't always get an early copy of the book or so I've heard. So what I did is I combined arc team and street team. And I said, you get uh, a copy of the book, but you also agree to do promotional things with me. And I have like challenges and prizes for other promotional things. It's really fun. Ingrid, <clears throat> cover reveals are always so exciting. Whenever someone says they'll reveal a new cover, I'll often keep an eye even closer. I on their page, the anticipation is killer. Yes, so we see it. Um, <clears throat> Mary says, totally agree with how helpful street teams are. A lady I know from church got the first episode today when I shared your post on Facebook about episode five release and I mentioned how much I love it. See, see, like that's the other thing we talked about in that ARC team video for patrons is like, what things typically get people to buy books and word of mouth and hearing it from a friend and someone you trust is like gold, much better than ads. Um, Chelsea says, glad I made it. I loved your cover reveal tactics and might snag some of those tips for myself. Please do. Yes. The more the merrier. Um, Robert, going to buy book one after the video. Thank you so much. And if you need an easy link, uh, they're down in the description below. That is amazing. Thank you guys so much. Okay, let's try to get through this because we hit an hour already. Things, ooh, things that I thought would be really helpful, but I'm adding a question mark at the top of this uh, slide because I'm not sure how much these things helped. Um, I think they can definitely help. I just wasn't able to see a direct correlation from when I did them to then seeing a rise in sales or KU reads. Does that make sense, you guys? So I'm not saying that these are bad and that you shouldn't do them. I'm just saying that I couldn't see that direct correlation. Um, so, and I'm curious, you guys, let us know in the chat as I'm sharing this, what are the top things or the top thing that you think helps you make a decision about, I'm going to buy this book? Is it the cover? Is it the book description? Is it because you read reviews? Is it because you hear it from a trusted friend or someone you trust to share good recommendations? You know, is it something else? Let me know. I would love, love to hear it. Okay. So, the first thing that I would say that I didn't know helped me as much as I wanted to was having early chapters as a pre-order incentive. I got a ton of pre-orders for episode one, like I said before, when I did this, but only like a handful and a half of people signed up to actually get the incentive. So I'm not sure if it was the incentive or if it was just the excitement and hype of people wanting to read and support my debut. I don't know. Um, I didn't do pre-order in incentives with the other books because they were just coming out so fast. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, but just based on, again, how many people actually signed up for the incentive, I feel like more people just like were excited about the book. So I, again, I don't know if next time I would do a pre-order incentive or a different type of pre-order incentive. I'm not sure. Um, sharing story snippets, snippets of your story, short paragraphs, um, excerpts, whole uh, chapters. So I shared the opening paragraph and, and page <clears throat> first of the first episode. And I think that re was really helpful because you know, it's the beginning, like everybody can understand the beginning of a story. And, you know, I think they, they got excited. They could see my writing. So I do think that that helped. But as I went on, I like tried to share more snippets of like the other episodes. And, um, and sometimes I shared, like, you know, I said, Hey guys, like pick a page on, you know, in the book and, or percentage number for the ebook. And I'll share a snippet from that page. And then I collected all of those and I got quotes and I like shared a bunch of them in a row. And I didn't get a lot of engagement on those or like response from those. And I didn't see sales from those. So I feel like 
even though it was cool to do, I don't know if people were like, well, this is like an episode even later on. I haven't even read the first one. I don't want to spoil anything. So like maybe I won't read it. I don't know. But I feel like the strongest is probably sharing your first page or even your first chapter. Um, but I don't know how much sharing beyond that is really helpful. Maybe if like you had a theme of like today, like sharing one at a time and sharing like today, I'm going to share like an example of, you know, a part that I think was like really good description that I did or some funny dialogue that's non-spoilery or, you know, something specific Then I think people can kind of get a context for what they're about to read and then like actually feel like they want to read it. Um, also, I'm going to put in here sharing reviews. Um, reviews definitely help with retailer algorithms. Uh, they give general cre credibility and seeing a lot of positive reviews can help a reader make a decision if they are on the fence about a book. But I didn't see, again, a direct correlation between sharing reviews on uh, like Instagram or my newsletter or something and then getting sales. I mean, maybe a little bit. Um, but it wasn't like I shared like a few reviews of like glowing reviews. And then all of a sudden I had all these sales. So I, again, super, super important for retailer sites for gaining credibility for the book in general and for people who are on the fence, but like organic using it as organic marketing. Um, I don't know. I don't know how helpful or maybe not that it's not helpful, but it doesn't, it didn't correlate to direct sales. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, um, why it might still be helpful um, to share them, just don't expect like sales to like come rolling in right after. The last thing I'll say is book related activities, which I really love. And I know some of you really love, uh, this definitely kept my current readers engaged and we had a lot of fun doing them like the contest and the book chats for the read along and all this different stuff. And I think it looked really fun to readers that aren't reading right now. Um, others have commented to me how impressed they are at my engagement. Um, but not sure how much of the new readers it really brought in. And this might just be like a long game. And this is where I'm going to kind of throw everything that's on the screen into this bigger thing where like these things might actually be helpful long term because some people are letting me know that they are just starting to reach episode one, but it's like how many weeks after I've first launched episode one that they're super excited about it. Um, and it might be um, that, you know how people say someone has to hear about something seven or more times before they actually believe it or they check it out from like seven different people. So the activities that I'm doing, sharing the story snippets, sharing the reviews, doing the little things here and there, even though they might not have like been like a cover reveal where someone makes a snap decision to pre-order, it might be those little things that you sprinkle in here and there that, um, are those one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh time that person sees that final review or sees that, you know, uh, final like book related activity or, or sees that story snippet, you know, after all of this exposure and seeing other people share it, they're finally like, okay, I'm going to check out episode one. Cause all these people keep talking about it. Um, or it seems really fun. I think I got to get in on this. So am I saying that these things didn't work in the sense that you shouldn't do them ever? No, but I think that putting your energy or me, I would want to put my energy into the other things that I listed on the previous page and still do these things, but like not like have all this pressure of like, I absolutely need to do all these things. Um, you know, or I won't sell books. Does it make sense? Um, okay. I have some things that I would like to try next. Um, and I think we're almost done and we're time for, we're ready for extra questions. I'm going to reveal the cover for episode six. So stick around. Um, but let's see, I saw some more questions come in. Ooh, there's a lot of them. Um, let's see the back of the book blurb and sample pages, uh, is what would uh, bucket of crows, which is what would get you to, uh, buy a book. So I love that. So sample pages does help for you. So that's really good to know. Um, fairies and self pub. Yes. Um, let's see, Katie, can't wait to watch the replay. Hi, Katie. Um, Jackie cover book blurb and sample pages are the things that get you to buy a book. Love it. Um, author verse and everybody who's 
like these are notes you should be taking of like what people are saying helps them uh, choose to buy a book. So this is all market research for you guys. For me, it's always either the description or a snippet that draws me in. A cover is important, but if the description or snippet doesn't draw me in, I'll pass on it. Yeah. So sometimes it's like that perfect storm of all the things, right? So we have heard that people are finding snippets really important. So that's good. That's good for me to know, even though I felt like I didn't see a lot of uh, movement after I shared them. Ingrid, I love a closer breakdown on ARC or street teams. Social interactions aren't quite my thing. So I was thinking I wouldn't do it at all, but everyone seems to have such great experience hosting them. I mean, it depends. It depends what kind of person you are. I love cultivating community and doing all the things. I did do a very detailed breakdown and showed like my discord group and like what's all in there and how I organized everything. Um, but it's in the author life tier on Patreon. So even if you wanted to jump to that tier just for one month to like see all the backlist and all the archived videos and then, you know, jump back down, uh, that's just an option if you want to see that. Abby, the thing that makes me buy a book is if it keeps coming up on Amazon, like if you like this, you'll like this. And then I usually read some reviews to see what the book has in it. That's totally true. So again, if you're in the right retailer categories, that could totally help. Um, Allie says the cover and blurb make me pick it up, but I never buy a book unless I've read the first page or so. Voice is so important to me as a reader and writing style. Okay. So you guys are saying that snippets are super important. So maybe I need to take, put my foot in my mouth. Um, Mary says word of mouth, sample pages, sometimes the cover. Okay. All right. Um, Chelsea, I do high key judge books by their covers. The artist in me is slightly snobby about that, but if the cover doesn't get me a friend recommending it will get me very curious. That's very true. So arc teams again, could be totally helpful. Um, honestly, same, same to some agree at also, I'm also an artist and a writer. Okay. That's good to know. Ali, the few times I bought a book without reading the first few pages, I ended up selling back to a secondhand store. Mm, okay. So you've learned your lesson, right, Ali? Jackie says, when it comes to ARC teams and my biggest thing in general, I can't even get regular engagement, let alone ARC signups. That's the other thing is like, uh, we we could have a whole other discussion about that, Jackie. We, we could talk more. Um, Ingrid, to be fair, book covers are kind of made to be judged. It's the book's main marketing focus. It's true. Abby, I don't like story snippets because like you said, I just feel like it's really out of context. So maybe that's the thing again, when it's not just like the first page of a story, which a lot of people are saying that's what they look at first. It's like, if you're going to share a story, story snippet, you have to share the context of like, why is it important? Or like, you know, in this scene, we see main character like meets love interest for the first time. Go, you know, like that would get me like, okay, I know what, what scene I'm in. I'm preparing myself and now I have this expectation and I'm excited to see how this author pulls it off. You know, like that would be a different thing, I think. Um, Ali says, true. That's why I think it's so important to know your target audience when creating your cover. Exactly. Um, Bucket of Crows, I think people might be a little numb to reviews because they're so, so, so subjective and anyone likes different cups of tea. That's so true. And that's why it means so much more when someone you that you admire who like likes a lot of the same books you do when they recommend it, then you're like, okay, right? Heather, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. That means the world to me. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're wonderful. <laughs> Um, Ingrid, I like snippets in general, but it does depend on the snippet with the loss of context. The pros and questions arise from not knowing where it comes from. Okay. So maybe we've just learned something guys. Um, Jackie says, yeah, I only look at reviews if I'm already considering buying a book and I'm passively interested in whether it's good. So that's like the last kind of step for you. Um, uh, if you're already interested, reviews can bend you either way. Uh, Ingrid's a greeting with Allie looking through the bookshops and noticing trends in your genre is so valuable. Agreed. Um, Mary says it could also be that the timing wasn't quite right for the person to pick up the book just yet, be it personal life or financially or whatever have you. That's so true too. A lot of factors. Um, thank you for facilitating this research opportunity. You're so welcome. This is why I like doing live streams and not you guys just hearing what I have to say because if this was a pre-recorded video, I would have just said maybe story snippets aren't as important and we wouldn't have people then coming back and being like, no, wait, I really find them important. But it's context. That's the thing we learned today. Ingrid, and a few, um, a new fairy. Yes. So anyway, I'll just say this real quick. If you're a YouTube member, 
you get to become uh, a fairy or the different kinds of fairies in my book. So you'll see uh, the wings on the sides of people's names in the chat. And that uh, shows how long they have been a YouTube member. So they support my channel with a short um, supportive donation every month. And uh, they get fun goodies you can check out. I have a video about my YouTube um, partnership. But Anyway, uh, thank you again so much, Heather. Uh, Robert says, that's true. Cover may snag me, but sample has to grab my attention. Okay. Writing style, for sure. Jackie says, I will say, I think when most people read sample pages, they're already on the Amazon page, so they have the con context, I think you meant. Um, cool. Yay. Thanks, Heather. Yay. Okay. I think I caught up. <laughs> We're going to wrap up here um, with a couple things. So next time, or what I want to try next after organic marketing is promo uh, and deal sites. I've definitely heard a lot of really great things about, about those, um, about ads. Um, so I might want to try ads. Um, I've thought about Pinterest too. I've had a lot of good correlation between Pinterest and my blog and my YouTube channel and like having certain videos actually get a lot of traction from Pinterest. So that's something I've also thought, like how big is the book community on Pinterest? Um, Cause that's a really great search engine as well. And how could I utilize that? And then obviously TikTok um, is something I've thought about or doing a more bookstagram focused Instagram or something. Um, so as I do these things, if you guys wanna hear how it goes, um, I could update you and do a video on it. Do I plan to keep publishing serials or full-length novels? The short answer is yes, I plan to keep publishing serials at least for now. Overall, I think it was a successful experience for me and what uh, it accomplished what I was hoping it would accomplish. So growing and engaged readership, all the things that I shared before. But I'd like to change some things and try some new things next time like I've shared already as well. Um, and then I cannot confirm or deny if On Wings of Ash and Dust will have a second season. If it does, it would probably be a serial again. So that would be one project. But I've definitely been planning to do a serial format um, when I get back to Sisters of the Shadowwood, which is, a, I have a few videos on that story. I was actually like kind of plotting it and sharing the progress with that um, live with you guys uh, sometime over a year ago. So there's a few videos on that if you want to check that out. But that's another story that I was thinking about. And will um, I switch to Trab Pub in the future? I basically, I'd, I'd like to try, but I want it to be with a standalone novel, maybe with series potential, but definitely a standalone. So not that I would switch to Trad Pub. Um, I think at this point, I would always be a hybrid <laughs> if I did Trad Pub and got in with an agent or a publisher. But um, I think I would be too scared to try to hand a trad pub uh, publisher my like full series idea because sometimes that those don't get picked up or like they don't continue the series. So if I had a standalone um, story, that is what I think I would try to query with and then keep doing my series or serials in self pub. And then um, I do have a story called Project Snow that I've put on the back burner for a while now, but that is a standalone fantasy novel that I would probably try to query. Okay. Other questions. I know we had a couple that I asked you guys to remember and like repost. Um, so you can do that now. And uh, we'll, I'll try to answer your guys' questions as quickly as possible. And then uh, cover reveal for episode six and a couple housekeeping things. And then we will call it for the night. Um, let's see. I saw some comments coming in. Okay. Um, welcoming Heather to the YouTube member group. I love it. Uh, Leanne, off topic slightly, but will we get an update on Sisters of the Shadowwood? I'll just tell you right now that there has been no progress since I've started publishing this. Um, I, I think about it often. It it has such a warm place in my heart. You guys know it, it has some um, relation or like inspiration from Once Upon a Time, the TV show. And uh, I started watching the last season of it again, because I never, or the... Anyway, they had like a spinoff and uh, I'm watching it again. And I'm like, oh, I want to get back to Sisters of the Shadow. It's so bad. So yes, that's my update for now, but no current progress. Um, Mary says, I definitely want to see Sisters of the Shadowwood. 
I'm so glad my patrons actually got like way behind the scenes, like, and also input into the plot. And so if you're on Patreon or want to join, you can see all the behind the scenes of that as well. Um, Ingrid says serials gave me back that nostalgic feeling of waiting in anticipation for the next installment. I love binging, but I have missed having things last a little longer. Yes, definitely. Not even with TV shows. We don't even have that anymore because of the binging. So I am with you, Ingrid. Abby says, yes, I'm so excited about Sisters of Shadowwood. You guys, oh, yes, I want to get back to it. You're making me want to get back to it, but I, I need to focus. I need to finish this first. Um, ditto to Shadowwood. Oh, see, and this is what I'm saying, you guys. If you are like putting some things out there, feelers out there, sharing certain things, you know, and people are this excited about a story that's not even fully written yet, then you know you have something that people are going to be excited about when it publishes. So like, it's like you don't want to give so much away that somebody can like copy your idea and get it out before you. But at the same time, you got to give enough so that people like get excited about it. And you know that like I have something that is worth pursuing and seeing till the end because it's a lot of work. Uh, Donnie said, what do you think about KDP so far? Um, obviously I have nothing to compare it to. Thank you, Allie, again, for putting that up. Um, but I, I mean, I've enjoyed, uh, the idea. This is another thing I did. I forgot to mention, but I'm, yeah, I'm on one retailer site and I think doing a serial. So book after book after book, only having one platform is very, like, I don't know what I would do if I needed to update like a gazillion platforms. And I know some people are like, oh, you're narrowing yourself. And I know there's some people that don't do Kindle that are like, oh, I want to read your stuff, but like, I don't like do eBooks or I don't do Kindle or I'm on Apple books or whatever. But, um, for my sanity, like it has been great. Um, and again, I really like how they updated their book reports. Cause I think before I was like, how am I going to tell from these reports if like things are working, you know, but now that they updated it with this, um, dashboard that they have now, I'm going to have to try to find a way to show it to you guys without like showing all of my stats. Cause I don't know how comfortable I am showing everything, but I would love to like take you guys in and show you a little bit somehow at some point. Um, cause it is, it's very cool. And I feel like I'm mastering one platform and one of the biggest platforms for eBooks, um, for books in general. Um, and that has made me just really feel like, okay, like I'm getting a handle on this and maybe at some point I can expand to others. Um, hope that makes sense. Abby also asked, thank you, Allie, for reposting. How has Kindle Unlimited worked for you so far and has it boosted purchases and engagement? So I think I did a quick, um, number crunch before this. And I think, oh, I hate math. Hold on. Let me just do one more number crunch. <laughs> I want to give you some kind of stat because it was like, uh, okay. That can't be right. I don't know. I, I have to get back to you on like how much it's boosting it, but I am seeing reads almost every single day and I will do an, I will do some kind of numbers video just to like give you guys a little more context. But I think so far, um, I'm assuming that the Kindle Unlimited people are people that are most, mostly people that are finding me organically. Um, but yeah, I could do more research to figure out if that's right. But I figured if I'm going to start with Amazon and just be Amazon and like serials and series in general tend to do really well in KU, then I was like, I'm, I might as well try it. So I think I need more uh, data to really answer that question. But so far I'm, I'm definitely seeing like reads almost every single day. So, um, Ingrid, so excited about sisters of shadow. Thank you. Um, how is your brother's board game? So if you guys don't know, my brother is, um, designing a, I can bring my face up here, uh, designing a board game based on my series. He's been doing it for a while, but he also has a full-time job and kids and wonderful things. So, um, it's, been on pause for a little bit, but he's still working on it. He actually has multiple ideas for multiple different games based on the series. So I will let you know as soon as that actually develops into something that maybe we can like preview here. I might bring him on the stream uh, one day and you guys can like see what he's been working on, um, maybe give some thoughts, but that's the update there so far. Um, from Ashley, again, thank you, Allie. What kind of market research did you do before publishing? Um, so I feel like I would have to think about this a little more intently about what I did and like kind of go back into my records. But 
I think obviously I read books in my genre and in my age, age category. Um, I know a lot of other authors who write in this age category and genre. Um, I, you know, studied the categories that I thought my books would fit into in Amazon. Um, and I think just getting, yeah, getting to know other readers who read this genre, I think that was important um, or helpful. And um, there were definitely things I did. I'm just totally blanking because my brain is like fried after everything I just shared. But let me think on a little bit more. I know Sarah Cannon's publishing the Thrive course, again, did take us through like thinking through that kind of stuff. Um, but I feel like I have to get my brain around it a little bit better to give you a better answer. I'm so sorry. Um, Crystal says, hello, Brittany. So excited to have uh, made the live stream. Yay. We are just wrapping up, but the, the replay will be up shortly or available shortly. Uh, encouragement is everything. I agree. Um, Allie saying to Ingrid, yes, I loved and also hated waiting so long for each Harry Potter book, but it was so fun to get to midnight releases of the books. Oh, so fun. Um, Ingrid said, Ash and Dust and Sisters already are at, uh, such a high level. They're so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, can't wait. Yay. Basic description of Shadowwood. Um, three handmaidens uh, in a village of people that are gifted with magical abilities uh, or three, three girls uh, are hired as handmaidens to the prince, the, the lady. Oh my gosh, I'm butchering this. She's like the daughter of the Duke of their, their town. And, um, she has an ability to spin gold. Um, there's one, uh, character who's based on Red Riding Hood. There's one character based on Mulan and one character based on a female, um, oh, a female. I'm totally butchering this. You guys, you should go to my website. There's a better like thing on my website description, but anyway, they have to save this, um, lady that they are handmaidens for. And there's a lot of other stuff going on. I'm totally butchering this, but I would love for you to check out the crafted description on my website. I'm so sorry I butchered that. Um, it's really fun. It's if you love the TV show Once Upon a Time, I think you'll love this show. Book series. <laughs> Guys, my brain is shutting down. I think we have to stop soon. Um, Allie, it's a love-hate thing for sure. Okay, hold on. I'm only doing KDP and draft to digital. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, that will make it a lot easier for sure. Uh, let's see. Ingrid, imagine instead of Ash and Dust being over in August, it's still going now. <laughs> That's so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, any idea when we might get the paperback of Ash and Dust next year? I did answer this earlier. My basic answer is I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm hoping for early 2021, but I'm hopefully I will have more for you by the time the last episode airs releases. I'm still talking about it like it's a TV show. Um, elevator pitches on the flyer. Needed. I really should have it memorized, but I think I did at some point, but I totally butchered it. I kind of want to look it up now, though, and just read it to you guys to like redeem myself because it's on my website, which is not hard to get to. Um the characters are based on Red Riding Hood, uh, Robin Hood, and Cinderella's God Fairy Godmother. Yes, they are. <laughs> Robert, thank you for being uh, very kind and not judgy. Because uh, I think I can get to it in like two seconds. Because I kind of want to read it now. Okay, so if you go to my books page, it says right here. <laughs> That's my little uh, graphic for it. Loose fairy tale mashup. Serving the Duke's daughter by day, three handmaidens spend their nights stealing magical knowledge from the rich to give to the poor. But when their royal lady, lady an unlikely friend, begins turning to gold, the handmaidens must find a way to break her family's curse while keeping their secret life or risk losing everything. That's the pitch. Okay. <laughs> um, awesome. Three girls hired as handmaidens for the Duke's daughter, handmaidens by day, Robin Hood, gang by night. Huge mashup of fairy tales and an exciting magical adventure. Ingrid, I'm just going to steal that. Yes. I love that so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you guys ready for a cover reveal? If you are, put I'm ready in the comments. It's coming. I did want to say real quick while you guys are typing that, 
that we are wrapping up my donation challenge that I did in honor of episode four's trial of life. Um, and basically for any book or merch purchase you make until this Thursday, September 30th, I'm going to donate 20% of what I make to the St. Jude's Children's Hospital, whose vision is to add uh, advanced cures and means of uh, prevention for pediatric uh, catastrophic diseases through research and treatment. Um, I thought it'd be really great that when you buy any of the books in this series or buy fun merch, you'll know uh, that you're also supporting an amazing cause that I think if you've read the books, you know that Alice, uh, my character Alice, would be so for this from episode four. Um, and you guys voted for new merch, so I just wanted to throw it up on the screen real fast. I have a Redbubble store now that I think I forgot to link below, but I will link after we're done here. It's also linked in my Instagram bio. Um, but I took all of the cover art and made all of these items you see for all the cover arts. Uh, and I also have die cut stickers for like the cute little character, um, cartoons that Ingrid so wonderfully put together. And then if you like the merch better on Teespring, cause they have different items. We also added digital wallpaper, um, a mug with all of the character um, cover art on it, uh, long sleeve tees, like you can get the wings on the back, which is really fun, and uh, zip up hoodies. And then I'm working on zipper pouches and posters, which I hope to get up before Thursday. So you can definitely go check those out um, or buy the books if you want to know that, yeah, your purchase, 20% of it is going to go to St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. I'm really excited to give that donation. Um, also, I want to let you know that I am in the process of trying to finalize the book activity that we'll do for the trial of creativity. We do a book based or an activity based on each of the episodes that goes with whatever trial the fairy, the fairy heirs are going through during the competition. And I'm thinking about hosting like a short Instagram challenge where um, it could also help more writers and book lovers find and connect with each other. And it would have something to do with creative elements. So either you would answer a question or include something in your photo, um, maybe uh, that has to do with fantasy books or magic, um, something that anybody could jump into. And it would be like a community kind of activity. It might happen next Monday through Friday, but I'm still trying to get the details together. If this sounds fun to you, please put this sounds fun in the comments just real quick so that I know that that might be something you'd want to engage with. Um, but I'm also open if I think of something else that wouldn't take uh, up like posts, but I'm thinking that it could be something too, that if you do your regular posts throughout the week, you could also kind of weave it into whatever kind of posts you're already posting. It would be like an easy thing. Anyway, we're going to do the cover reveal and then we're actually going to end. Um, I did see how far are you with Sisters of the Shadowwood. I have a draft finished for episode one and I have beta feedback for that draft, but I have not edited yet. That's basically where I'm at. But I have like all the other episodes kind of plotted out. So I know where it's going. Um, Ali says, love that you chose St. Jude's for the donation. Thank you. And Ingrid said, trial of life has been my favorite book activity so far. <gasps> I'm so glad. Thank you. Um, Instagram challenge sounds great. It sounds fun. Okay. All right. You guys sound like you might want to do it. I could make it as easy as possible. Yes. Drum roll. Guys, this is the last final episode cover you are going to get from me for a while. So get excited. This is episode six. Um, we're headed back to Gray Merrill. We're headed back to the Gwillian's home in the mountains for the final trial of the Ethodyne competition. All the mysteries will be demystified. <laughs> Lots of intensity will happen. Here we go. This is the cover for episode six. Did I say episode five before? I meant episode six, Edge of Fates, the Gwillian battle. Quinn has come full circle, so we'll see her arc come full circle. Hillary, who is my cover artist, killed it again. And guys, based on this cover, um, any predictions on what's going to happen in this final episode? Well, let us know. I swear I won't spoil it. I will let you know that this uh, final episode is up for pre-order. So if you will, you know, you're going to read it anyway, you could pre-order it right now. Um, it is up with a temporary cover. So I haven't fully put this out there yet, but you guys are seeing it first after my patrons and our team members. 
And um, you can also sign up for the cover reveal team if you're excited. If this is like a beautiful cover, you're like, I'd love to help share about it. Um, we're going to have a cover reveal sometime next week uh, for this episode. And the form is linked down below if you would like to join the cover reveal team. And the set is complete, you guys. These are all of the covers all together. These are my beauties. I'm just so in love with them. I'm so glad I can show you all of them. And uh, next week, we are going to have our book chat for episode five. And then um, I'm going to have to plan because we're going to release episode six in two weeks. And then I have to plan how far out I want to do the book chat for episode six. Like, do you guys feel like I feel like I'm going to need at least a week off of YouTube, but maybe like two weeks after episode six comes out or maybe at the end of October, we do like a big, like allow other people to like kind of catch up with the series. Maybe at the end of October, doing like a big kind of end of series book chat. Um, what do you guys think about that? Let me know. I want to get to your comments. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Let me just get through the comments here. Um, <laughs> Asha and Dust, Asha and Dust. Um, ooh, pretty, yay! Whoa, epic. We have some hearts. We have epic. We have gorgeous. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. I can't believe it's over so soon. That feeling of excitement mixed with sadness is real. Me too. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> Small babies. Um, it's the prettiest one so far. Abby, thank you. Um, it looks epic. I hope, yeah, it's going to be as epic as it looks, I think. Battle. Do the competitors have to kill each other? I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm not. You're going to have to read it. Um, such a big difference from book one, right? And so if you put episode one and episode six next to each other, it's really cool because Quinn is facing uh, her back is kind of turned to two different ways. So whether they're on the end caps or whether they're right next to each other, they're like mirrors of each other, which is great. Cause like, that's the visual difference of like the arc that she goes through. Thank you so much. As long as Alice and Hickory don't die, I'm good. I'm not saying anything. Mary says, oh, wow. So awesome. Yay. Don't hurt Alice. <sighs> I want to give you guys thoughts, but I can't. Um, Ingrid, I love how the first and last has the repeat color of her wings kind of holding uh, the books together. And that's where like Gwillian color is red. And so I knew the last one would be red, but the first one I was like, well, she's a Gwillian, but she's also a vagrant. She's a pirate. So that's where we had like the kind of dark gray blue in the background and then had her wings be like the pop of color. Uh, are you going to do like a finale release party? I'm going to have a release party for episode six, which would be the finale of the series. But if we want to actually talk about the episode six, after you guys have read it and more people have like read it, that's what I'm trying to figure out where, um, where she, she, where it should be, when it should be. I K R Lee. She's my bae. I love her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think you're talking about Alice. Yes. Okay, great. You guys are fantastic for hanging out with me again for another hour and a half. I want to learn how to do short lives or short pre-recorded videos. I just, if you guys have tips, let me know. Or if you like exactly how we do the live streams, let me know that too, because I don't want to change it if you guys love it, but I'm like, how oh, are these things so long? Um, but before we go, I also want to say a huge thank you to you guys for hanging out with me tonight. As always, so much thanks and gratitude to my ARC readers and my incredible ARC team who is going above and beyond to help promote this series. And thanks to my amazing patrons who are faithful supporters, as well as my supportive YouTube members who Heather just joined today. So yay, Heather, you all, you are all amazing. So I saw a couple more comments come in. I'm just going to look at them real fast and then we're going to say good night. Um, I like them this way. You like the long uh, live streams. Okay, good to know. You're so welcome, Robert. Phenomenal covers. Yay, thanks, Courtney. Um, Sako has a heart. Thank you. Thanks, Sako, for being here. Ingrid, I like long lives, but that's mostly because I'm used to that being the standard for lives. Haha, <laughs> that's true. So I just feel like there's some people who don't watch these because they are so long. So I feel like I maybe I need a mix. Maybe I need like a couple of these long ones and then a couple of short ones every month. Um, viewer interactions take a lot of time. It's true. Um, Bucket of Crow says schedule a live before an appointment. So you have to get off by a certain time. Who that's true. That's dangerous, <laughs> but probably would work. Um, love the long live. Okay. You guys like hanging out with me, but you're also here hanging out with me. So Oh, I got to ask the other the other people who are in here too. Uh, Chelsea, I was able to catch this because it went on a little later than an hour. 
right. So sometimes it's a timing thing. Two hours is great. Epic. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I just saw, I can't click on it yet. Oh, here we go. What you could do is have the live up, but afterwards edit a short highlights version of it. That's the other thing I could do too. I just, maybe I'll do that on my break. No, I probably shouldn't, <laughs> but mm, that would be good to like come out with shorter versions. Definitely. I should do that sometime. Maybe do one that's just you chatting and one with viewer interactions. That's true. Good ideas, guys. Thank you so much. So um, we are going to sign off because I need to like go decompress, but this has been so fun. You guys are amazing. And uh, we will see you next week for episode five's book chat. So if you haven't read through up through episode five, you want to get in on that book chat, just make sure you read all the episodes up through five. And a lot of people are reading them in like a day or so. So you could definitely catch up by then just saying. So anyway, have a great night, you guys. Love, love, love. And we'll see you next week. Bye.